The Ryzen 9800X3D is overclockable. Plus, we have all the specs and one big change. But before I get to that, AMD just released two new CPUs, Intel has a huge plan for GPUs, and how much would you pay for the RTX 5090? Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, in a recent video I discussed the fact that AMD was releasing two new CPUs based on their AM4 platform. Well, it looks like once again the leaks were correct, because AMD officially launched the Ryzen 5 5600T and 5600XT, and if you love being one of the first to know all the latest PC hardware news like this, make sure you subscribe to GamerMelt. And if you didn't see that video, to quickly recap on what these CPUs are, both of these are 6-core 12-thread processors, with the 5600T getting 200 higher megahertz base clock than the regular 5600 and 100 megahertz higher boost. Then we have the 5600XT, which is 100 megahertz higher base clock than the 5600X, and once again 100 megahertz higher boost clock. So a bit of a jump over last gen, and when it comes to availability, as you can see here, these at least were available on Amazon. I will say that I've tried looking it up myself and I honestly can't find them, but as you can see, they at least were selling the 5600T for $186.58, then the 5600XT for $192.08. Now, I will say that I have seen on other sites that they claim that it's cheaper elsewhere. I did try looking on Newegg and couldn't find them, but at least at this price, definitely doesn't look all that impressive, especially given we're talking, you know, just one to 200 megahertz higher clocks here, especially when the 5600X is $125.50 on Amazon right now. But like I've said multiple times in the past, at least to me, the really great part about these new CPUs continuously releasing is because it more or less forces AMD to support the AM4 platform for even longer. The reason being is just because obviously they can't release new CPUs and then like a day later say, okay, we're completely done with this. We're not going to support it anymore. So at least to me, the good news about this is that it actually helps everyone on the AM4 platform, not just these new CPUs. And next up for today, we've been waiting years for gaming GPUs to finally use chiplets. And I don't mean the kind of chiplets AMD use with their RDNA 3 GPUs, where they still add all the logic on one chiplet. I'm talking multiple chiplets with the cores on them. Well, believe it or not, it could in fact be Intel who does this first. As you can see right down here, this one is from Underfox, who shares interesting patents that he finds online. And here, as you see, it says earlier this month, Intel was finally granted a patent for its disaggregated GPU architecture, which will likely be the first commercial GPU architecture with logic chiplets, also allowing for the power gate of chiplets not to be used to process workloads. And as you can see, we are talking multiple logic chiplets. So once again, Unlike AMD, at least when it comes to their gaming GPUs, they have the memory and things like that on their own chiplet, but the actual logical cores making all the magic happen. And like I said, as you can see, these are actually separate. So think of this as taking multiple GPUs and then combining them into one. This isn't like the old school multi GPU gaming or anything like that. So yeah, this is really exciting and let's hope Intel or at least anyone does it soon. And next up, not too long ago, Moore's Law is Dead claimed that from one of his sources that he had heard the RTX 5090 was set to be between $2,000 to $2,500. Bucks. Later, we actually heard that that really isn't correct, at least from what this other leaker was hearing, that it is in fact going to be cheaper. Well, we now have a new story where yet another leaker is now claiming that the RTX 5090's price will be around $2,000. Now, he doesn't really seem like he's all that sure about it, but the reason why I wanted to discuss this was actually two things. First, I wanted to ask, what exactly do you think you would be willing to spend 
for the RTX 5090? Let me know down in the comments below. And the second reason is just because I really do think it's important to let Nvidia know this is absolutely absurd. I mean, honestly, $1,600 is absurd, but it's probably gonna be hard to convince them of that given the fact that so many people bought it. But we absolutely need to tell them unequivocally the $2,000 is completely absurd. And lastly for today, we have a ton of stories about AMD's next-gen Ryzen 9000 X3D chips. First up, as you can see right down here, well-known leaker HXL sort of shared something, well, really interesting. As you can see, it says, according to HXL on X, one of the changes in the Ryzen 9000 X3D series is the rearranged order of the 3D V-cache on each chiplet. The previous generation had 3D V-cache positioned on top of each CCD, yet the new generation reportedly places the CCD on top of the V-cache. As you can see right here, so this was the first generation, the 3D V-cache is on top of the CCD, while now it's underneath it. And if you remember in my last video, I actually discussed the fact that there were apparently some massive changes because the first two generations of X3D 3D V-cache chips were considered, at least by AMD, the first generation of 3D V-cache. Yet this new one is the new generation. So obviously that meant this was going to be a much bigger change, at least as far as the 3D V-cache itself, than going from the 5800 X3D to the 7800 X3D. Either way, this absolutely looks like it is 100% correct as well because, at least according to this, this apparently is a delitted 9800 X3D, and as you can see, the chip itself looks just like a normal 9000 chip, not X3D, and the reason being is because, at least with the 7000 X3D chips, if you put the light on it, you could actually see the 3D V-cache, while here, you clearly can't. As far as what that does, there's been a lot of speculation, but really, no one knows for sure. All we know is that this obviously is a pretty big difference, and it at least partially could explain why AMD's next gen is able to do so much better. With that said, we now also have basically the full specs brought to us by a European retailer's price comparison tool. As you can see here within the tool, we have the 9800X3D. Once again, obviously it's an eight core, 16 thread CPU, but it apparently gets a 4.7 gigahertz base clock, but only a 5.2 gigahertz boost, which is really odd because at least according to performance that we've been seeing, it's not only been getting more than 5.2 gigahertz, but it's actually been able to beat multi-threaded performance versus the regular 9700X, yet the 9700X comes with a boost clock of 5.5 gigahertz. Well, it looks like we might see why, because as you can see here, it says that the multiplier is unlocked. It says free multiplier, yes. Meaning you should in fact be able to overclock this bad boy. You can see unlocked multiplier, obviously that means you can overclock. So maybe, just maybe, this bad boy can get way up there, 5.6 gigahertz, maybe even 5.7, just on water cooling alone. Fingers crossed there. But that actually isn't all when it comes to the 9800X3D because we have actually seen the CPU spotted multiple places with price. But as they state here, keep in mind that it is not final. As you can see, it says, after some digging, they found the 9800X3D was briefly listed by a large French retailer, and as you can see, it was set to 463.58 euros without VAT and 556.27 euros with VAT. And in Lithuania, it was set to 557.31 euros with VAT. Now, compare that to the regular 7800X3D when it originally launched in April of 2023, and it was at 499 euros in Europe. So clearly it's looking like it's set to be a little bit more expensive, and I do actually have to admit that I really don't think it should. I mean, it definitely is looking way faster in multi-threaded workloads, but hopefully this is just early pricing and they really don't know. This happens all the time, but I actually wanna just use this time to say AMD, 
please do not make this more expensive than last gen. It really isn't fast enough in gaming, at least if those leaks were accurate with it being 8% faster in gaming, I really don't think that's fast enough to justify it for most gamers. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's next-gen Ryzen 9800X3D? And what do you think the RTX 5090 should cost? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day!